4.4 Concavity and Second Derivative Test In order to look at increasing and decreasing functions, we need to look at whether something is concave up or concave down. An increasing function is concave up when it looks like the following. When it's concave down, it will look like the following. So increasing is co concave up, looks like this. Concave down, looks like this. A decreasing function, concave up, will look like that. So again, it's decreasing, but concave up. And finally, decreasing, concave down, looks like that. Determine t concavity. To determine the concavity of a function, we have to look at the slopes of the tangents. f prime of x is the slope of the tangents. f double prime of x is how the slope of the tangents are changing. So we can use f double prime of x to see how the slopes of the tangents are changing to determine the concavity. Concavity and points of inflection. If f double prime of x is greater than zero for all x in a, within a certain interval, then the graph of f at x is known as concave up, is concave up on that particular interval. If f at x is less than zero for all x on an interval, then the graph is said to be concave down on a particular interval. A point of inflection is where the concavity changes. If it either goes up, if it either goes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. So to find the points of inflection, we must set the second derivative equal to zero where f or the where the second derivative does not exist. These are, could, are our potential points of inflection. Given f at x is equal to x to the power of 4 plus 1, find any inflection points. Take the first derivative, take the second derivative, set the second derivative equal to 0. We find out that x equals 0 for that, and we find the point. That point is a possible point of inflection. What you need to do to find out if it is, is to use a, uh, a table, an interval chart. Now, let's look at another one. Given f at x is equal to a very large cubic function, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus 4, determine any increasing and decreasing intervals and any maximum or minimum points. Determine concavity and state any points of inflection sketch the curve. So we need to set the first derivative equal to zero and what we do is now we have a quadratic. Because we can't factor it, what we do is try and determine the values and we find out that the first derivative will not equal zero. So what that means is right here tells us that we probably we don't have any max or min values. Set the second derivative equal to zero. We find out it's linear. We find out that x equals one. What that means is at one seven, we have something going on. Well, test it by testing the interval. Doing the interval table, you must use all values that are critical and all values that are potential points of inflection. Use the first derivative to determine increasing or decreasing, which is what we did. Use the second derivative to determine concavity, and you find out that from the interval from negative infinity to 1, it's increasing, concave down. From 1 to infinity, it's increasing, concave up. So f at x is always increasing. There are no max or min points. f at x concaves down when x is less than 1, and concaves up when x is greater than 1. So there's an inflection point at 1, 7 because of the change in concavity. 
Now, these points that we determined below there, one of them is the y-intercept. The other values are values that we're choosing to find that are before and after our uh, inflection point to give us a bearing of what this graph looks like. You need to have some extra points on a graph in order to graph it accurately. I would say the minimum number of points you want to have is probably about five points. That's nothing new because you needed five points when we used to graph by transformations. So here's our graph. Plot the points. Plot our curve. Turns out it's a cubic function. Make sure that when you plot your graph it's nice and big and visible for me to see. All right. The second derivative test is if f prime at c is equal to zero and f double prime at c is greater than zero at that point c, then there is a local minimum. If f double prime at c is equal to zero and f double prime at c, sorry f prime at c is equal to zero and f double prime at c is less than zero, then there's a local maximum. Note, if the second derivative is equal to zero at, at that point, and the first derivative at that point is equal to zero, or the second derivative at c does not exist, then you need to use the first derivative test to determine key critical information. Let's go back just there. You need to use the first derivative test to find out the key information. Example number three, given y equals zero, sorry, y equals two over x squared plus two, determine the following information. Make sure that you read all the information and you answer the question. Make sure that you look at the type of equation given to you, because sometimes I may already give you the first derivative given. In this case, the first derivative is not given. I give you the original function. So you have to set the first derivative equal to zero, which we do using chain rule. And you find out that the x value is equal to zero when the, for the first derivative equal to zero. Then you must set the second derivative equal to zero and determine the second derivative. And this uses a combination of product rule and chain rule. And you find out that the value here of x when the second derivative is equal to zero is going to be uh, sorry, uh, x squared. x is equal to plus or minus root 6 over 3. So now we need to do an interval chart of the different intervals including the values for the, f the critical points from the first derivative and from the second derivative. And here are all the values in order from left to right. We determine the test points that work and see what, what happens in the first and second derivative. And we notice that the concavity changes and it changes from increasing to decreasing. Calculate the coordinates, which we see here, and what we hear, what we have here, are is the y-intercept, which is also a critical point, as well as the uh, the points that are considered inflection points because the concavity changes at those points. So we can make the final conclusion based on that chart. Here is our final conclusion. y is increasing when x is less than 0, and we can see that in the interval chart, and decreasing when x is greater than 0. y also concaves up on a certain interval, and concaves down on another interval. There is a local maximum at 0, 1, and points of inflection are as follows. All of these values here 
are determined from the table down below. So you need to look at this table down here, all that information we have to determine these conclusions. Don't forget to state the intervals properly. Example number four. Given f at x is equal x to the power four minus two x cubed plus one, determine all of this information. What I want you, to, once we determine all of this information, what we do is look at what the question is asking. The question is asking determine any increasing and decreasing intervals. That means we need to set the first derivative equal to zero and find the value. Then you're to determine concavity in any points of inflection. That means we set the second derivative equal to zero. So we do that all the way through this question, and we see that for the first derivative, we have certain values, and the second derivative, we have certain values. All these values that we have here are going to be important parts of our interval chart. So we set up our interval chart as follows, and we use the interval chart for the first and second derivative, and we plug in the values. So, the interval chart from negative infinity to zero, from zero to one, one to three over two, and three over two to infinity. Determine the increasing and decreasing values. So for both of these, we have in decreasing, last one is increasing. We have concave up, concave down, concave up, and stays concave up. So here is our conclusions that we can make. These are all the possible values of increasing and decreasing, our local minimum, our inflection points, and again, sorry, you'll have to read through here, it's also concaves up over here. So these are our different intervals for all of the values listed. Don't forget if I give you information in a paragraph, you read each and every single part and figure out what the question is asking. Alright folks, that's the end of this video. Have a good night. Take care.